By the way, yes, the, the two companies are merging. It's going to become Fans Transbots. It's not Fans Toys and X Transbots anymore. They're going to merge. You heard that first here on MP Squared Reviews. <laughs>
um, and I was able to get it within this week, so that's why I have it this weekend. So thanks to you folks at The Chosen Prime for getting this bought to me. Okay, looking good. Well, let's turn that, turn that frown upside down. Okay, it's more impressive in hand than uh, I've seen a picture of the box online to show, because you don't get a sense of the scale, but you know, that's a decent sized box. And there's some weight to it too. And a look at the box here. The box art's pretty nice. I like the, uh, the kind of, you know, painted look to it. What's his saying here? When you have exhausted all possibilities, remember this, you haven't. All right, there we go, 86 uh, MX10. And I don't know my Roman numerals, so forgive me. And we got that cool retro uh, G1 style um, battle art on the back, I like that. And the classic readout, very cool. A little bit um, chunky here in person. Uh, I wish this little, um, you know, bio here was, was more inset. It just kind of, it's got no borders. It just kind of like is slapped on the whole back of the thing. So whatever. Um, oh, and they're advertising. What is that? Um, um, punch counter punch. So I can't wait for that. And on the other side, oh, oops, sorry, this side, we got blown up character art there. And we got, uh, you know, a little schematic view also looks like of his, what is that? Helicopter mode. All right. X Transbots logo sticker on there and there. And I don't know why they've changed their logo. Um, if you haven't seen it lately, it's uh, been turned white and yellow and black. And uh, I can't say I'm a fan. It doesn't look like much to me. Okay, right off the bat, we have some uh, instruction stuff. This weapon accessory cannot be assembled at the bottom of the vehicle, so don't try it. Okay, we've been warned. And then here, the alternate head, and that head is cool. Um, is that like Lost Light version? I don't know, I'm not up on the comic books, but um, that looks very similar to like a uh, Lost Light art I've seen. So if you know, let the rest of us know in the comments. Unfortunately, it looks like my copy was kind of rushed and got the packaging smushed. Um, guys, I mean, if you're really gonna go for quality and you want people to feel good about getting your product, you know, how about not giving them folds right off the bat in, in the user manual? Um, you know? Check out the contents here. Collector's card, oops. Collector's card and uh, got some cool art there. Same as the front of the box, I guess. Yeah, same pose. Little dark to my eye, it actually picks up better on camera. And we've got a uh, bio on the back with a uh, blow up of his face. And it's a cool collector's card. Mangled instruction manual. Not too bad, but still folded. And, uh, but on the back here, got a blow up of its part of that battle scene, that uh, whole battle art on the back of the box. And there's Cup, surprisingly, um, in the same shot as Springer, so that's cool. Um, I don't know if they kind of grouped them in the order in which they were gonna be released, but uh, there you go. Wow, okay, full color. Dang, nice. All right. Ooh, cool. Look at that. Right off the bat. Get to see all that goodness. All those pieces and accessories and the bot right there. Flip side. Oh, there we go. We got that torpedo. You know, not gonna die tonight. 
and uh, the base. Um, so cool, let's get this open. Ah, we got that uh, accessory piece that makes the uh, rotating blade look, I'm assuming. Got the bot himself. That has some heft to it. Okay, if it wasn't clear that they were declaring war on fans toys before, are they not declaring war on fans toys now? Look at that. Um, yeah, come on guys, do your own thing. Uh, don't, don't, don't copy fans toys. Um, this is substantially heavy. Okay, um, right off the bat, looking pretty darn good. One of the things that I saw as a detail on Fans Toys was they actually had like their blades painted a darker gray. So I did like the fact that they dressed up the plain gray on the Fans Toys with just some fan accents in there inside the turbine. Um, but that's cool. Um, oh, it's interesting. They actually did a unique mold on each side for uh, the fan blades so that they didn't look exactly the same on either side. So it's rotated as if it could be, um, you know, in real life, you wouldn't have them necessarily sitting in the same positions. Um, and I don't know if that's subliminal, but that's also an X for X transbots, I guess. Cool. And it does have a spot for two little characters. That is cool. All right. I don't really care for the deep dark blue um, canopy. I wish they would actually give us uh, an accessory that would let us change that out to be uh, a clear or a smoked kind of gray. Um, I don't need my window to be that anime blue, um, because in real life it wouldn't be. So we've got the sword that is looking cool, man. Look at that silver. I was, I was afraid it wasn't going to be silver. Um, but that blade is looking nice. Okay. I've got something here, which I hope is not something I need. It does look like it's a, hopefully it's just a manufacturing scrap <laughs> and not something that broke off the bot. All right, we've got various faces, some other, a couple other faces. We've got his alternate head, which I actually really dig that design. That's really cool. And, okay, one of the blast effects. Nice. Aha, the little only human guy. Uh, this is him in human form from the episode, uh, G1 episode, Only Human. Nice looking gun. I really like the uh, metallic sheen on this gray. It's nice. It doesn't have like that fans toys speckle to it, um, but it's just a nice solid metal kind of gray. His other gun, which does this telescope or something? Nope, I guess not. But that's, that's cool looking. That's got some good detail to it. Nice. And then in the bottom here, there's something. I don't know if I'm probably supposed to get that from the other side, I guess. Let's find out. Let me take this head out so it doesn't fall out. Oh, yeah. And nothing left in the box. Now, with that head out, hopefully we can turn this over and things won't just fall out. Okay. Or they might. Yep, there they go. Oh, got some tape here. All right, the torpedo. Ooh, man, that is nicely painted. That is cool. I like it. I like it. Thank you, X-Transbots. Looking good. I guess it gets mounted or can be mounted on something there. It's got that little uh, slot. So, cool. And we've got the base. We've got the stand arm. And this is nicely done in a really nice metal look, too. Cool. 
And then, ah, here's the blade to make it look like it's spinning. So I'm not exactly sure what that other set of pizza pieces is, but there's that. And just the stuff that we've already seen. All right, one thing that I do want to check out is this little um, only human character. Um, I wondered why they molded the characters to have these strange poses. Uh, I don't understand it. So let's take a look at this. So here this guy is, and uh, sculpting looks pretty cool. But what's up with these arms, man? I mean, this is like a, it's a non-op arm. I mean, he might as well just have that in a sling. It's got no articulation at the elbow. You can't put it down. This one is just straight out. Like, what are they supposed to be doing? Shaking hands once you get the other guy? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Um, you know, it's, it's not articulated at all. Um, the sculpt looks cool. Um, I'm wondering actually if this is just a repurpose of the Dr. Wu only human set. I did buy that a long time ago, but I haven't pulled it out, uh, recently. Um, and, uh, I never have unpackaged it. I don't think at least not to ex actually examine the character. So if anybody knows if this is actually a Dr. Wu, um, that they've just repurposed, uh, you know, put that in the comments, let the rest of us know. But, um, so far, not very impressed. Uh, maybe the instructions will show us where this is useful, but I don't get this, uh, get this character um, and how it's posed. I don't get it at all. Um, so um, kind of in the category of, aside from the, the sculpt and the good paint, um, kind of in the category of why. All right, how about we get uh, this guy into one of his alt modes and see how that looks. All right, alt mode number one here is the car mode. And um, I didn't realize how little we actually had to do in order to get it into car mode, but um, I wasn't really thinking about it. Uh, we've got these tail fins, which just flip up. So there you go. And we've got headlamps, which uh, out of the package, the headlamps were swiveled. So I guess uh, that could be kind of cool if you want to do like a little, um, I don't know, swamp, uh, <laughs> swamp seeking mode. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so these roll around, and then I had to use my spudger to dig in there and get this open. But uh, there you go, you got the headlamps. I have not looked through the uh, owner's manual yet to see if these things actually light up, but um, they do go surprisingly wide. Um, they tilt up quite a bit, which seems kind of funny to me. Um, it's like they didn't create a mechanism to stop them at the optimal spot. But uh, maybe that's cartoon accurate. I don't know. So there we go. That is the vehicle mode as the car. And let's take a look just at the top of it. There we go. Top, back, kind of a back quarter view, back other quarter view, and a front kind of quarter view, and kind of front looking down, and... And unfortunately, it's a little too uh, far away from the actual cartoon design to be accurate. But it still looks good. Now, how about how well it rolls? Ooh. You hear that dragging? Something is definitely dragging here. And I think it's the chest. Um, and the wheel itself is actually rubbing up against the... Uh, the hub, the wheel well, um, that's not that cool. The other side feels a little looser, but it also just rubs right against that, that uh, wheel well. Um, maybe this will be reseated better once I've transformed it and transformed it back. But uh, the only thing that I can see, here's the rear wheels. That's pretty smooth. The other side. Not bad, not bad. But um, yeah, the chest looks like, uh, it seems like that's the, the highest point that might be rubbing and causing that noise. 
There we go. Something's dragging. It's better now. Yeah. So it might be that chest plate. I think that's the only thing that can be really dragging there. Um, unless it's these flaps uh, for the rear wheels. So anyway, um, it's not extremely uh, smooth in its rolling, you know, as far as uh, being very fast. Um, it uh, pretty much stops itself. And uh, with the weight that it actually does have, um, that's too bad because the wheels could have made it move really quite nicely. Uh, so x Transbots bots uh, could have done a little bit better on that for sure. Not sure exactly why we couldn't have gotten wheels that uh, didn't have to grind into the wheel wells. Now I really wanted to get this to work. I really wanted this to, to be able to sit in here and um, I don't know if you can really see it, but it is notched like it's supposed to hold the hilt of this. Uh, it's shaped very similarly. Actually, I mean, it's shaped exactly for that notch. So it does, you know, kind of slide in here. And uh, it, you can kind of get it to lay flat like this. But interestingly, this doesn't work. Even though in the instruction manual, it does show where uh, a sword should go. Um, they retracted that with the insert that we saw earlier that actually says, correction, this weapon accessory cannot be assembled at the bottom of the vehicle. So, um, I got to call that out because that's a, that's a pretty big, um, change up when you put it in the instruction manual and then you have to include an insert saying that uh, that doesn't actually work. Um, and looking at this bot here, it looks like it's the pelvis that's really getting in the way because the way they want, uh, the way they showed in the manual to insert it would be that the flat of the blade goes uh, up and down, not, uh, not sideways against the bottom, but up and down so that it would actually insert in between the legs here underneath uh, these two wheels, this wheel bridge here, and insert up there. But this pelvis is really what's in the way. There's no groove for the blade itself. Uh, so I'm not sure what that story is behind that uh, design failure, but um, you know, for as long as this took to get to market, um, X Transbots, I think, um, needs to be careful what they promise uh, or what they talk about as being features versus what they actually deliver. Now, I'm not knocking the rest of the stuff that comes with this thing, but there's the thing about over-promising and under-delivering, and that is not a good scenario. You know, if you're going to say that you're going to do something, you better be sure that you know how to do it and that uh, you're going to be able to do it. And unfortunately, that's what uh, x Transbots looks like they did here. They thought that would be a feature, and then they weren't able to make it happen. And uh, that just looks bad. All right, here he is in uh, his second alt mode as the helicopter. As you can see, it looks really good. Um, is it cartoon accurate? Let's take a look at this photo here. And unfortunately, it's a little too uh, far away from the actual cartoon design to be accurate. But it still looks good. Um, it definitely has a nice heft. This uh, has a couple of spots where you want to hold it from and maybe others that you don't as much. Um, these panels here kind of move, so um, holding it around the middle, like from the bottom here, not necessarily a good idea. Um, these two uh, side, um, I don't know, jets or um, uh, whatever you want to call them here, um, they don't tab in as well as I'd like them to. Um, there, so they, they kind of splay out from the body a little bit. Um, this one may be more than the other one right at the moment. But uh, regardless, you know, you're not necessarily holding it fry by this front, um, so whatever. But good places to hold this guy by are these two jets and uh, the tail here. Um, the tail's pretty solid, really solid. So definitely can hold it like that. 
Um, these wheels uh, are surprisingly nice. Um, they have good clearance and they roll really smoothly. So kudos to X-Trans bots on that. A couple of minor things. These little spikes here for the, the front, uh, or the, I don't know if these are supposed to be like laser beams or what, uh, laser cannons rather, but um, the instructions don't mention them at all. And another thing, the, the instructions, and another, and another thing, the instructions don't mention how to open up the sword to turn it into the propeller blade at all. As a matter of fact, the instruction booklet in its final form for this alt mode doesn't even show the propeller or those uh, side um, laser cannons being deployed. Um, it just kind of makes me wonder why X-Transbots can take so long to get something out and it still seems in part like it was rushed. Um, as an example, the feet in alt mode um, are supposed to have like this tab that I guess tabs them together or some, something else happens here with the foot tab there. Um, well, my copy of this doesn't have that tab on the foot at all. There is no tab that goes between those two feet there, as you can kind of see here, this little bar. And what they're exactly meaning by this indication of this yellow square, I have not found a way to move that yellow square, so I don't know what the heck they're meaning by that. Um, and if you can see here too, the uh, inner part of the feet are solid pieces, whereas here they're notched. So I, I again just kind of say why um, X Trans bots, uh, if if you've been developing this for so long, are there inconsistencies between the manual and your product? Minor points to be sure, but uh, still. Um, I hope this is not like an indication of things to come where they've given them so many targets to hit with uh, the bots that they're supposed to put out to the market that um, they end up not hitting the marks on certain features of those bots. Um, and we see uh, discrepancies between what they thought was gonna be and uh, what ends up being. One last thing, the cockpit is cool. Um, it does, whoop, if I can open it, my fingers are a little, one second, my fingers are a little greasy. All right, use this other handy dandy spudger which has this like plastic knife on it and gets under uh, thin areas. There you go, two seats inside there, cool. So I also purchased this um, because I was curious as to you know, whether or not we were actually gonna even get MX-10 anytime soon thought maybe I'd pull the plug on it. I had already bought the uh, Mastermind Creations version of uh, Springer. Um, I have not opened that to review it to see how I like it, um, but uh, you know, the, uh, the Springer Wars kind of got the better of me a little bit. And um, this is an interesting option. I mean, this is like the cheapest one. And um, from the way it looks here on the package, I don't know that you could really go that wrong. Um, you know, if, uh, you didn't want to pony up the dough for the X Transbots version or the Fans Toys version. Um, I guess it all depends on really how much you're into Springer, but it'll be interesting to see how well this compares uh, to the X Transbots when it's about half the price. So there you go. Um, we'll take a look at that eventually on the channel as well. And uh, just wanted to show you that maybe you can get away with uh, something cheaper. All right, so quick correction. After handling the toy, uh, I found out that uh, apparently I had it somewhat mistransformed when I was showing you uh, how it uh, grounded out when it was rolling. Um, it does not ground out if properly transformed, apparently. Not bad, right? It is draggy because these... Uh, <laughs> These wheels up here, these these are still a problem um, because they have no relief at the uh, wheel well. So um, I, I don't know why X Transbots didn't uh, do something about that. Um, but this apparently, I think this is what was uh, grounding out 
when I was rolling it earlier. Um, I think this just wasn't snapped into place where it should have been. So now that it is, you can see in here. Oop, <laughs> I just ground out on something. All right. Be aware that maybe you still will ground out on something. Yeah, I'm dragging. If I just hold it lightly and don't put my any weight on it, it rolls well, and I don't seem to be hitting anything on the bottom. But, uh, all right, word to the wise, you may ground out when uh, driving it in vehicle mode and or, um, you know, you need to take a look and see if this is actually snapped into place here, which mine is, apparently. So maybe that's not what's hitting, but eh, it looks like one of the lowest points right there. So, all right, just be aware. Don't go playing with this outside on the concrete, probably, you know. Still a really cool looking uh, vehicle mode, you know. All right, one thing that uh, isn't mentioned in the instructions is that these headlamps can be lit up with batteries, um, as you can see in this video here. So if you feel so inclined, uh, you can go ahead and give your uh, car or helicopter uh, mode actual lit headlights. I don't know how they turn off or don't, uh, so uh, don't ask me. <laughs> if anybody else out there actually knows whether or not they have a magnetic on-off switch, um, you know that would be great. Please let us know in the comments. Uh, help out us other collectors. All right, so this guy poses really well. If you've seen my Instagram, you've seen some shots of him. He's very photogenic. Um, the poses that you can, you know, this, this, this dynamic thing you can do with his hips uh, because of that ab crunch that he's got is really amazing. Um, the fact that he can swivel and has an ab crunch is really amazing. You know, um, it, it's, it's a good looking bot. Um, this, I don't think I really have any problem with this being my Springer. Um, this guy looks good. Uh, he doesn't feel as good in hand when you're transforming him. There are certain things about this that don't feel very solid. Um, the most concerning of which to me is the fact that the chest, you know, it just doesn't tab in anywhere. It just sits there. Um, so I don't know if these uh, couple of tabs here were meant to actually hold in a friction kind of way against this hinge um, right there, but uh, eh, it doesn't really. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, but as you can see on the side here, um, the seam doesn't completely close. So like I said, maybe I am missing something. It looks like it's supposed to uh, kind of fit together there, but I don't get it. Um, so definitely something to be uh, desired there. Um, but like I said, look at, look at how poseable he is. Look at this. That's pretty amazing. That ab crunch. And it's done uh, in a way that I haven't seen before. I don't know if this is what happens internally with other transformers, other bots from other companies, but they've got this, uh, this tab here that's actually got teeth on the other side of it that ratchets. So I don't know how uh, stable or how sturdy that's gonna be over time because it's plastic. It's not like even you know some kind of die cast or something, but um, it does, as you can hear, have a solid ratchet sound and does hold its position. Um, let's see. If I undo the backpack, you can get a better look at the uh, teeth. And uh, let me push this down here. Ooh, there goes this. See, there's the teeth on it. That's what allows it to do this ab crunch. Um, so interesting uh, uh, piece of uh, uh, engineering there, and uh, it does work. Um, so that is cool. Let me get them put back together. So. He does look good on a smooth surface like I have him here. Uh, these feet pads, um, they did give you some kind of rubberized feet pads here to try to help with grip. Um, it does work somewhat, but if it's a, an extremely slick surface, um, you know, like polished wood or, or something like that, then um, 
Oh, well, actually, maybe a polish would actually help grip on the rubber better. Right here, I've just got, uh, um, you know, like a, a matte finish uh, black on my coffee table. So um, maybe that's why it's a little more slippery. But um, those legs kind of can slip apart. Um, that could be a criticism. We could have had a little bit of a thicker rubber pad on the feet. But this guy poses, he stands, and um, looks good doing it. Before we get into all of the articulation here, I just want to talk about the weapons real quick. For some reason, and I've only tried this gun in the right hand, but this gun does not tab in well to uh, his hand. Um, for some reason, this tab here on this side just does not snap in solidly. It's like, you know, it looks like it's got a little bit too much of a rounded edge here, maybe top and bottom of that block, um, and it doesn't sit, doesn't grip in that slot. Uh, unlike this gun here, fits really well, really snug in either slot um, on the hand. So um, the lighter gray gun with the, the dark gray tip definitely holds well. The silver metalized one um, does not grip, at least in the right hand. Uh, um, it just, you have to wrap the fingers around it, but it does not securely uh, snap in there. So there you go. Now, while he's looking like he's doing a little bit of staying alive, a little bit of disco here, um, he's just waiting for his sword to be attached. So let's uh, get his sword on him. But before I do that, let's check out the base of the flight stand, which doubles as an accessory holder. So flip it over, and uh, it actually does have places designed to hold his various accessories, as you can see here. Uh, getting the sword to tab into the little block, a uh, little open block that's behind it, was a little bit of a trick. Um, I actually had to use a spudger and press down on the handle to uh, actually get it to snap in there. But it does fit as uh, shown in the instruction manual. So there you go. And I did away with my um, Fans Toys Wannabe QC Pass sticker, uh, which you know pretty much shows how much uh, XTB is declaring war on Fans Toys. Um, and I took it off of the foot and put it on here for, uh, you know, as a keepsake. And also, as shown right here in the manual, the guns do snap into the underside of the base as well. And you can see that example here. There we go. Nice job, nice, um, you know, additional details. Uh, XTB really seems to like to go with those details, and I think that's great. Um, as long as the quality of the you know main bot isn't suffering or isn't this isn't a this isn't a cover for a, a bot that is suffering um, problems you know um, if you agree uh, you know let me know in the comments below if you if you don't care you know let us know in the comments below but uh, yeah that's the way I feel about it um, you know don't try to dress it up if it's uh, got problems with the main bot you know that being said though um, you know maybe the extras are worth it. <laughs> And that's looking uh, pretty darn cool. That sword does fit really well in that slot in his right hand. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a, a little bit of a look uh, in that left hand and see how that works. Um, since the hilt does, or the handle rather, does swivel, you might have a little bit of trouble uh, trying to fit it in there. But be, uh, but rest assured, if you're if you're patient, um, it will fit. And as you can see, it sticks in there really well. While we're switching hands, we might as well take a look at that hand holding the gray gun, the light gray gun. And uh, there you go. You can see it's a nice solid hold. And uh, GT Short Stories, if you're out there watching this, um, then you'll see that uh, I think I've represented uh, proper uh, gun safety and etiquette here. Uh, you don't have your finger on the trigger. You have your finger alongside the weapon uh, ready to go to the trigger. But it's not resting on the trigger because that is not safe gun management. So... Uh, you can be proud what you've uh, been telling me about different things. It hasn't uh, been just wasted breath. One thing you might have to notice about the sword handle is that uh, it is offset, you know, as far as the midline of that handle. So it uh, really is going to fit only in the hand uh, from one side. Um, I believe it's, yeah, the shallower side. So um, just be aware, you may need to flip your sword around. All right. I'm not sure why, but um, I can't get the sword to snap into his hand or it's snapped in and it's just not filling the slot. But um, this is being held by his fingers and um, his fingers are, they're not loose, but you know, um, you know, th this thumb is on a little ball joint 
and um, doesn't necessarily allow for a lot of resistance and uh, even I think this thumb knuckle is pretty yeah it's pretty pretty agile too if you will um, so those fingers are not a super strong grip by themselves and um, that sword for some reason is just not um, snap fitting uh, into this hand so right hand yes left hand um, maybe I'm just not hitting the angle right but uh, yeah not working so well in the left hand okay articulation starting with his head he can spin 360 um, his neck has some good mobility here so you can uh, have it back like this um, you know normal reserved you can have him interested in looking down uh, so that's cool for posability and uh, you know if you want to do some shots of him looking down at uh, another bot or um, you know spike or something like that um, he has no real side to side uh, he can look up a good bit it's not uh, he can't crane his neck like he's flying like Superman but uh, he can look up uh, he can tilt down and uh, he can actually you know move that neck forward and tilt down so there you go good head mobility um, shoulder he's just on uh, this circular pivot but he can go 360 there his shoulder goes out 90 degrees or so he does have a butterfly joint so you can turn that shoulder inward which is cool one thing about that shoulder uh, butterfly though is that it does seem to come untabbed fairly easily so um, that's kind of a bummer but um, you know as you've seen uh, his pose um, can look really cool uh, he's got this bicep swivel 360 he has this double jointed elbow which gives him less than 180 degrees but still substantial um, his wrist swivels 360 um, fingers are individually jointed on all of the actual fingers themselves the thumb is on a ball joint so very very flexible very positionable and then it has uh, a couple knuckles so um, good articulation there and that's something that sister company to X Transbots, Keith's Fantasy Club um, you know actually has done in the past they, they've specialized in replacement hands that have better articulation for uh, MP scale bots um, the hip rotation eh, 360 there you go um, ab crunch like that's pretty good can't do the full um, you know like sitting in a car seat kind of position but um, you know maybe I guess with the feet yeah with the feet out he can so there you go um, good ab crunch interestingly enough and I don't remember where this fits in the transformation but his whole torso can come up <laughs> so I don't know if you need that for anything but uh, just know that that midsection does come up you collapse that and uh, it really does take a little bit of a push to get it to snap back down flush um, hip skirts he's got uh, the side hip skirts no front hip skirts the foot or the leg rather can go oh shoot, excuse me he does have a front hip skirt there we go it was just hiding very well all right front hip skirts go up so everything flies up completely 90 degrees that's great leg can go out Ooh. well okay so get check that out um, doesn't look like the leg can go out 90 degrees unless you give him that ab crunch so there you go mobility tip there um, knee 90 degrees kickback for running uh, decent and he's got the hip swivel does he have hip swivel yes he's got hip swivel with a ratchet there or no that was just it <laughs> actually that might have been it just hitting the plastic let's see all right so hip swivel is just on this ball it's not ratcheted um, Van Dam can definitely do the Van Dam uh, on ratchets very cool let's see believe it or not these are not thigh swivels so don't try that um, this double jointed knee no nope, I guess it's just single jointed knee um, so there's that um, toe we have uh, a tilt down somewhat not great we've got a lot of tilt up 
and we've got uh, tilt side to side in and out so very cool uh what else i guess that's about it yeah um i'm looking forward to being able to put this guy in some really cool poses um i'm excited about his posability one tip about uh his canopy here i thought it just had to stay up like this but i accidentally pushed it and it can snap past the little uh frame here and collapse into the pack so it disappears into that profile really well. So there you go. Good looking bot all the way around. One bummer um, as far as playability is concerned is that uh, I have not found any way to actually adhere the sword to the back. So it's not like he can just sling it over his uh, shoulder onto his back. That's kind of a bummer. Um, but you know, all in all, this guy's really cool. Um, he's going to be, I think, a really cool part of my collection. I'm not into the movie bots as much as I am into the original G1 characters from before the movie. But, um, you know, um, this guy has definitely grown on me. And uh, I like the way he looks. He, he looks really awesome. Another cool little uh, thing that I found, and I'm not sure what this is, but is that these little panels on his forearms open. And I don't know if that's supposed to be for his bot mode or for um, one of his alt modes, but it's like a little laser cannon. And he's got uh, one on either side. So, hey, you know, I don't know if that's like his holdout blaster. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm unarmed. Don't shoot, don't shoot. And then he just pops these open and he shoots the Decepticons down. Um, so uh, maybe something like that. One criticism I will say that other people have already pointed out um, at least I've heard one other person point this out. And that's that this grill here really should be more recessed in order to be uh, cartoon accurate. Um, I guess because of how they had to engineer where the head goes and everything, um, they couldn't really make this deeper. Uh, but maybe it would have been nice if they had actually just painted it a deeper deeper color so that it looked kind of like it went uh, it recessed as far as a grill is concerned. But yeah, these uh, this should really be more of a grill and there should be uh, a deeper recess for that airflow um, when he's in car or um, helicopter mode. One thing right out of the box that I noticed, um, and I thought maybe it was me rubbing the parts together, but uh, apparently other people have had this issue too, so much so that x Bots is offering replacement pieces for these yellow shoulder pads. You can't see this, but this is die cast, um, this whole thing here, and it's uh, you know got that cool um, cold metal kind of feel. Out of the package, this panel covering this screw hole right here was uh, in the box loose um, and it uh, looks like I might have to actually put some glue on it to keep it in place because uh, it's not popping in by itself uh, as far as I've been able to do it so far. So um, there are some of those uh, critiques there. Um, I really like Fans Toys Apache's details when it comes to, and their other bots, when they actually use that translucent plastic to add uh, little de details, you know, to the bot. So I thought, hey, you know, if you're really going to take the battle to Fans Toys, why don't you, um, you know, actually add a little translucent panel there with some kind of colored plastic? Uh, that would have made it look that much cooler. All right, as far as this flight stand <laughs> arm is concerned, um, this is a mystery. Uh, I don't know that the instructions, I don't think the instructions give any details really on this. Let me double check that. I was incorrect. There are instructions here. Uh, pay attention to all these little yellow parts. Um, yeah, uh, before you break your thing. Um, not that I've broken mine, but uh, you know, just be careful. But uh, yeah, there are these hinge points. Um, interestingly enough, I don't know if this is supposed to come off or what but I guess this is some kind of lever I don't know if somebody else figures this out let me know I don't really want to take the time to try to figure this out but there are these panels that move on either side of this arm for some reason um, I don't know what that's all about and they do seem to seems to be some kind of clicking mechanism in here I don't know why that is and it does move both of them. Um, I don't know if that's for him to stand on or what. 
But uh, okay, the thing I can figure out is that this has got a spring-loaded ratchet, so where it attaches to the bot, so it'll apparently articulate uh, and let you hold your figure at different angles. Um, so that uh, seems to be like it should be a cool feature. Um, interestingly enough, this I don't know if this is actually supposed to undo. Uh, I'm having a hard time with this one because um, this just seems to be on a slide. Get my spudger here. Uh, it just seems to be on a slide so that uh, you don't actually take the arm off the uh, track. It just, and it's not the smoothest slide, as you can kind of tell, probably. But there you go. And I guess once you find where you want it, maybe that's where you, I don't know, push this in. And that's the lock. Maybe that's the lock. All right. Let's see if I undo this. Does that loosen this or what? Okay, yes. All right, sorry, I'm fiddling with this here, maybe a little too much on camera, but, uh, and then push that down. Yeah, that seems to be the lock. So there you go. Uh, lift the tab to unlock the slide and then you can slide <laughs> the slide somewhat uh, you can it's just not super easy or smooth -ay -ay -ay. but there you go and then lock that into position with that tab as much as I guess you can push it all right so there you go that's the arm that goes on the display stand We've got the helicopter blade in motion, um, this plastic disc that you have to build out from that uh, smaller disc that you see in the package immediately. And then all of these pie pieces are actually um, packaged up together in that one pile. Uh, you have to take those out and put this together. This is a little bit of a challenge. Um, the tabs uh, alternate, so whether or not they go, um, uh, they clip under or on top of the other piece, it alternates. Um, and um, but you can do it, as you as you can see here. Um, these pieces on the outside circle slide in to fit, and you can still flex these enough to get these tabs to fit in, uh, even when you've got that last one or two pieces that you're trying to, you know, actually slide into the middle. So I don't know if that makes much sense to you right now, but uh, rest assured that you can do it. And this is a nice. Um, smooth spinning uh you know axle here for your helicopter mode as far as face plates are concerned or alternate heads um it looks like it's supposed to be as simple as uh, pulling the head out after you turn it in a particular way um and then uh you know popping the face plate out and replacing it with the other faces so let's try that here all right, so we're supposed to rotate the head 90 degrees to the right and pull up. And uh, wow, all this paneling for his shoulders comes out. Um, I'm not finding this to want to release. I'm scared. Uh, let me take a look at this off camera. Okay, so um, the instructions really do say it's supposed to be as uh, simple as turning the head 90 degrees to the right and pulling up and off. Um, I am afraid because this thing looks very small and thin here at the neck, as you can see. Um, so I think I'm going to take some extra caution here and um, actually undo this screw on the bottom and uh, take the whole thing apart and see what I'm looking at before I actually just yank. Okay, unfortunately, there has been a breakage. And um, what should have been a simple turn and uh, pull out um, re revealed a um, broken piece here uh, with the neck. Um, so I'm going to see if I can't uh, super glue that back together uh, and, you know, put the screw back into the hole there. Um, this is more accurately what that's supposed to look like. You know, this little kind of key um, configuration here for the center stud. 
Um, it's got that little block on the top there. That's supposed to be what uh, you turn uh, around in the slot to, in order to secure it. And to better illustrate what that really means is uh, take a look at the neck hole here. It's got this keyhole design. Uh, you can see it's got that notch at the top and um, it's got a thinner rim so that when you put the neck in itself, uh, the keyhole block goes in there and then when you twist, it then twists uh, to inside that rim and locks the head. Um, I don't know if this issue has resulted because of my uh, handling of the character uh, and, and torquing on the head and, and trying to get the head uh, plates on the shoulders in position and such. Um, so I don't know if it's a manufacturing issue or if it's my fault, but um, be careful because here, if you're going by what the instructions say, you should be able to turn the head to the right 90 degrees and that should line up your keyhole tab with the keyhole in the uh, shoulder plate or in the neck plate rather. And as you can see, even here, manufactured straight out of the box, um, that is not 90 degrees to the head and um, it's not gonna come out of that slot. So you'll be yanking and yanking perhaps, trying to get it out, but it's just because it's not lined up properly. So this technically is mismanufactured here for the instructions. Um, perhaps that was the same situation with the other head and from me uh, trying to torque it out, uh, you know, I broke the plastic. Uh, so I'm gonna reset this tab for the alternate head so that it actually faces where it's supposed to. Um, which is going to be where. Um, so if you turn it to the head, so when it's, it should actually be aligned to the uh, right of the head as well, straight out from the neck. So I'm going to change that. If you've seen other review videos of mine, then you'll uh, might have heard me recommend that you get certain types of tools. TM Reviews turned me on to um, spudgers, which you can just go on Amazon and look up a, a spudger set. Um, usually used to disable like uh, electronic devices, phones and such, uh, but useful when you're handling your toys and you don't want to, uh, you know, unnecessarily torque on a piece. You can use leverage instead. Uh, you can poke at things. Uh, you can pull at things with like a little hook one that I've got. And then a jeweler's screwdriver set is also very, very useful uh, when you have to, uh, you know, troubleshoot some of these things that you, we get with our third party bots. So I'm going to use that right there. So actually, it turns out this doesn't look like it's actually broken. It's got two little nubs there, if you can see that, on that collar. And there's two little depressions in the neck piece where that lines up. So um, bad directions, maybe. Maybe not mismanufactured because I think, you know, basically you can only put this in a couple of ways. And I doubt, I don't think either of them, neither of them should actually result in a 90 degree uh, to the face uh, for that keyhole tab. So um, let me play around with it a little bit more, but uh, be aware, it may not actually be broken, it's just not described well in the instructions. So maybe this is a, a, an anomaly of their manufacturing, but on the actual uh, traditional G1 Springer head, th those slots are basically 12 and 6 o'clock. Um, for the little nubs of this piece. It's very hard to see, but there you go. You kind of see them catching the light there. Uh, little nubs on that piece. So that should put the tab at the 90 degree position that the instructions claim. However, the IDW Springer head, um, to get it on, actually, you know, pegs in and, and turns around and locks in uh, at an angle. So um, I'm not sure what's different about the manufacture of the neck, but I mean, I think I lined up everything correct here as far as, you know, where that little nub was supposed to attach. Um, but it uh, requires you to do a different maneuver than the instructions say. So um, instructions say that, let's see, I guess, oh no, I have to go all the way up 12 o'clock get this out okay so the instructions say that in order to put this in there's the nub at 12 o'clock right um, the keyhole nub and uh, the keyhole nub here is not directly in line with the face it's more like at a 45 degree angle 
So in order to get the head on, you actually have to have it turned all the way around more than, more than 180 degrees so that the nub lines up with the keyhole and can pop in here. There we go. So when you do pop the head on, it's at a 45 degrees turn already. Uh, and, and backwards, sorry. So in order to lock it in, you got to turn it around. And there you go. Now it's locked in. But as you can see, that nub there is not at that 90 degree position that they say it would be. Um, it is at that 135 degree position. So, um, something's up with the manufacturer of uh, one of my heads, um, and uh, let me see if I can get the G1 head back on, but there you go. Um, you, uh, if you encounter this, uh, just be careful. Thankfully, it doesn't look like I actually broke anything on the head. It's just that that tab is uh, misaligned um, and was jammed, I guess, or something uh, for my G1 head. Uh, so, let's see how it goes back together, but here we go. That does do that one more time. Here we go, that does work. And then of course, it doesn't matter which way you turn it. So you can turn it less than the 135 degrees. You don't have to go all that way, but um, there you go. And that gives it that tab to lock it in place. All right, so um, got the peg, whoops. We've got the peg on and it's uh, roughly 90 degrees. There is a little bit of slop in the, uh, in the slot and uh, nubs. Uh, configuration here. So, um, you know, don't <laughs> get too obsessed about getting this uh, perfectly 90 degrees to the head. Uh, unfortunately, looks like either the chip was there when I got this out of the box or um, the paint is chipped from me handling the nose. But uh, if you can see really, really there, real tight. Uh, it's minor, but um, it is noticeable. And um, I guess I'll just have to do a little touch up on that if it, if it bothers me. Uh, okay, so how this thing now goes on, I think I would recommend that you view your bot when putting this head on, not from the front, not from the top, not from trying to just make it um, simple and popping it on, uh, you know, as if you're just going to play with it immediately, but um, I would definitely at least look at the keyhole, and there's the keyhole block, here's the keyhole block, and let's line those up to make sure that it goes in properly. So, and then you can see that when you open up, oops, when you open up the neck here, flop that chest open, and you can see that the tab is firmly in there at 12 o'clock. You can turn it 90 degrees roughly, uh, and then when you flip the bot around and close up the chest, then you can see, you can see that the head is on there properly. So yes, facing forward as it should be. So there you go, that, uh, that is the rule of thumb for this head, roughly 90 degrees, but just open it up, you know, just be safe. Uh, don't, don't risk ripping this thing out of its socket. Um, line that up and uh, check that out. And there you go. And then you can just simply remove that head there. All right. As far as the face plates are concerned, it's supposed to be, I guess, as simple as uh, just pulling the face down and out. So here we go. Here's the face. Push. Okay. Neck. Pull. Push the neck back. Grab the bottom of the face. Pull down and. Ooh, wow. Hmm. This might be better with a pair of like um, rubberized rubber tipped pliers. Uh, yeah. All right. So here's where I'm going to bring in one of my handy dandy spudgers. I've got this hook spudger here and I'm going to see if I can't hook behind the face mask and pull this out as pretty much directed. There we go. Okay. Not the easiest face replacement, but there you go. Handy dander, handy dandy hook spudger to the rescue. So there we go. All right, so as far as sliding the new face into place, 
um, I guess it's just going to be easy as reversing that process. And there's that little lip here where I guess the, the forehead is going to have to go in. So let me slide this up in here, see if I can't hit that slot and press that up. There we go. And look at that. Springer is happy now. He has a head that works and a faceplate that can be changed. So uh, there you go. That's the long and the short of uh, the head swapping and face swapping. All right, it's time for the Mixelpix Takara Tomy MP Scale Comparison Test. Here we have XTB's MX10 Virtus, their version of MP Scale Springer. And let's bring in the taller of our two MP Scale comparison standards, MP10 Convoy, AKA Optimus Prime. All right, so they look pretty good together, I think. If you had to ask me, it, what I thought the scale was before actually seeing them side by side or knowing anything else uh, officially about uh, um, their actual sizes compared to each other. Um, I'd say that I, I think Springer would be a little bit smaller, but you know, that's because who doesn't want Optimus Prime to be like the big awesome hero, right? And not eclipsed by somebody else. But obviously he's eclipsed by people like uh, Ultra Magnus and, you know, stuff like that. So um, whatever. Uh, but in this similar, you know, body style and, and size, I, I kind of thought uh, Optimus should be, um, you know, visibly bigger than Springer. But if we take a look at uh, the Freelance Graphics G1 scale chart, I've brought the two characters together from that chart here in this image. And um, we can see that Springer should be a little bit taller than Optimus Prime uh, by that fin. Now, if you don't subscribe to, you know, the, the accuracy of the Freelance Graphics G1 scale chart, that's fine. Um, you know, do what you want to for your collection, and, and if it works for you, that's great. Um, I'm just using this to see how closely things come for my collection. Um, and, and if it's something like, you know, if it's grossly outmatched, uh, then I might consider getting something else. Um, but that's what I'm using the scale chart for is just to kind of judge my uh, collection. And um, according to my discussion with Mike Lorber, who is uh, the guy behind Freelance Graphics, um, he did a lot of research into these charts that he's done across Transformers, uh, you know, storylines and uh, generations and stuff. Um, so I, I, I trust what he's what he's got here. He does make changes when he finds inaccuracies. So he, you know, is updating these things, uh, um, as he finds those things, or at least has updated these as he's found those things. So, um, I have a high degree of confidence that this is pretty close to accurate. So, um, back to our actual characters. If we bring in our MP scale, uh, ruler here, and, uh, we're just going to use this kind of as a, a level here. Um, and then we bring it up to Optimus Prime and Springer. We'll see that actually Optimus Prime, uh, because of his ears there, we'll see that Springer is actually a little too small. You can see that slant on that ruler there, slight slant, and um, Springer should be a little taller. Regardless of it not being 100% uh, uh, to the freelance graphic scale chart uh, standard, um, I'm going to say this guy is uh, good enough for my collection as Springer, uh, close enough, you know? Okay, so in prepping for um, my uh, summary review uh, for the end of the video, um, I was trying to get this gun out, and um, it actually is stuck in there so hard that um, you can't maybe make it out too well, but look at that. It actually started splitting, ac splitting apart. Um, the gun is splitting apart at that seam, and um, that's uh, an unfortunate um, thing for x Transbots. I mean, they're trying to give us some cool stuff, but, you know, this tab is very tight. Um, you know, this hole for the tab is very tight, and, and then I guess the gun just isn't glued uh, well enough uh, to really stick together. So I'm going to be careful with it, and I'm going to use my spudger here and push this out instead of pulling it and it just popped out and you can see that it split wide open there um thankfully it looks like i mean i think it's just going to piece back together but um that's not too cool you know so uh, i might have to stick a little bit of glue in there just to firm that up there you go just word to the wise all right, and on that note of the silver gun having trouble uh, coming out of the tray, um, 
this gun was so tight in there that I think it might have actually chewed up the paint here on this tab that was actually fit into the tray. Um, so uh, I can't be 100% sure that this wasn't like this out of the box. But, um, you know, um, uh, the tray is tight. All right, so on the whole, what do I think about x Bot Springer? Um, I already said that I thought it would be good for my collection. I, I think it is going to be good for my collection. Um, there was a lot of ambition in this project, it seems. Uh, they set out to do a lot of cool things in giving us the accessories and giving us the uh, articulation, uh, the, the ab crunch, the, the waist swivel. Um, there's a uh, die cast, a lot of die cast in this thing. This thing is a heavy bot. Um, I am not somebody who is, uh, you know, like really wowed for my collection by die cast itself. Um, if die cast is done right and done for the right reasons as far as like reinforcing the character, making it a better uh, collectible and a toy, then um, I'm all for it. And of course, you know, it does scratch that nostalgia uh, itch that uh, I have from holding uh, toys and, and Transformers when I was a kid, when you actually did feel that uh, die cast. So, you know, there's the, the correlation, uh, you know, the, the, the assumption that it's quality if it has die cast. But um, as I saw with KFC's uh, Opticlones, um, I, uh, I had some die cast that was too thin and it just, it, it broke. Um, so die cast in and of itself is not uh, necessarily a uh, mark of quality. Get off my soapbox about the die cast stuff at this moment. Uh, but yeah, this guy, he looks cool. He, he poses well. Um, it really hits some, you know, really good marks uh, as far as in the way it's looked, the way I have looked at the cartoon uh, renditions of the model. Um, and on the whole, it just looks close enough to, to be the right Springer for my collection. Now, I am interested to see, like I trotted out earlier in the uh, review at the beginning, um, Robot Heroes uh, RH2 Airwolf. Um, <laughs> you know, if, if that actually can scratch the itch of a Springer for somebody who doesn't really care too much about the movie bots, Maybe you'd be fine with just spending, uh, what, it, what is it, like, you know, 80 or 90 bucks now? I'm not sure what the current price is, but um, substantially less. Accessories. It has some cool accessories. They did a great job on this. I mean, this looks like it's worthy of coming out of the movie. Um, they did some questionable, a questionable accessory here with this guy. Um, I mean, it's not even scale for the toy. Uh, you know, it wouldn't fit in his cockpit. This guy is way too large and it doesn't articulate at all. So huge question mark as to why this was included, um, even though it does look like it was done well. They gave us some good, uh, if uh, mysterious or questionable accessories, um, but you know, the overall fit and finish, uh, or a finish at least is good. Um, <laughs> some tolerance issues, uh, uh, like I said, mystery with this arm here. Um, some uh, questionable uh, or bad instructions for replacing the head here. Uh, that was, uh, you know, not a fun find, but uh, everything turned out okay. And just so you can see, here are uh, the questionable images um, for that head swap, which show that little tab being, um, you know, facing to the right of the character at 90 degrees, uh, which is not what we found with the IDW head. They really did try to give us that complete package though for display, whether it's going to be in bot mode or helicopter mode or vehicle mode. And, um, you know, like I said, it was an ambitious project. Uh, it could have been done a little bit more to the T, but overall this is a solid offering. And um, I am excited that I actually purchased this. Um, glad to have it in my collection. And I'll be interested to see, like I was saying, whether or not Robot Hero can actually even compare for someone like me who doesn't care that much for the movie bots. All right, that's it. I give this a Mixelpix seal of approval. Uh, if I had to rate it on a scale of one to 10, uh, just based on my kind of gut and what I've uh, evaluated here, I'd give it an eight and a half to a nine. Um, it's, it's gonna be a really cool bot to include in the collection. Oh, and one other note, uh, this gun right here actually does tab into that left hand. So as much trouble as I had getting it into the right hand, uh, it slots into the left hand and stays there, so. All right, 
Thanks for watching. If you've watched before and you haven't subscribed, uh, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so that you get notified anytime a new Mixel Picks video comes online. Um, I've got MP squared reviews for new bots. I've got uh, Transformers Time Warp for uh, going back into the history of MP characters that maybe you haven't seen yet um, and that I have not reviewed yet, but are from the past. Uh, I've got Iacon Archives 2, uh, which is dedicated at this point to kind of the history uh, or interviews of people within the fandom and uh, MP one shots for things that are just kind of off the cuff and out of nowhere. Um, also Transformers prime time for my Transformers prime reviews. That's it. Thanks again. And until next time, happy collecting everybody.